Hello fellow armchair astronauts and welcome to part 2 in our series on rocket engines. If you missed part 1, don't panic, you can find a link to it in the description of this video. There's also a playlist on my channel with all the videos in the series. In part 1 we talked about thrust and efficiency and how those are related. In this part we're talking about a few more basic principles of rocket engine operation. Flow and pressure. Alright, uh, lift off and the clock has started. Lift off. Lift off. We have a lift off. 32 minutes past the hour. Lift off on Apollo 11. Discovery, go at throttle up. Hot head, nice to be in orbit. To help explain this, we're first going to draw a simplified diagram of a rocket. There are two propellant tanks, one for fuel and one for oxidizer. We also have a combustion chamber, which in this case is just a cylinder with one end open. And we have a pair of hoses connecting the two tanks to the combustion chamber. We should probably also have a pair of valves so we can control when the fuel is flowing to the combustion chamber. And that's it! This is all we need to form a simple bipropellant rocket engine. Of course, in reality, you won't find any rocket engines as simple as this, but this is good enough for what we're talking about today. In this engine, the fuel and oxidizer flow from their tanks through the hoses and into the combustion chamber, where they combine and are ignited. In the last video, we mentioned mass flow rate. In a rocket engine, the mass flow rate of our propellants means the amount of fuel and oxidizer flowing through the hoses over time. To have this flow, we need some force to push the fuel through the pipes. When our rocket is on the launch pad, the force of gravity will pull the fuel down into the hoses, and during flight, the acceleration of our rocket upwards will also push fuel into the hoses. But these forces aren't going to provide very much pressure, so we're going to add another tank to our diagram. This tank is filled with a pressurized gas. Most rockets will use helium or nitrogen for this gas. We will connect this to the tops of our fuel and oxidizer tanks. We'll also place a couple valves on these hoses so we can control how much gas we put into either of our tanks. Using this extra tank allows us to put some pressure behind our fuel. This allows us to have a much higher pressure in the combustion chamber, which is a good thing because chamber pressure has a great impact on specific impulse. Usually engine designers will try to get as high of a chamber pressure as the engine can safely handle. A significant amount of engineering and research goes into maximizing chamber pressure. And in future videos we're going to talk all about the various techniques used to do this. One thing that might surprise some people is that in liquid rocket engines, the actual combustion of the fuel and oxidizer cannot cause any increase in chamber pressure. If they did, then the fuel and oxidizer would get pushed back into the tanks and the engine wouldn't work very well. So the chamber pressure is always going to be lower than the feed pressure. What combustion does create is a lot of very hot gas. This gas is the exhaust of a rocket, and being very hot is what makes rocket engines practical. Through the use of a special nozzle, we can convert the thermal energy into kinetic energy in the form of increased exhaust velocity. And as we learned in part 1, exhaust velocity is directly related to efficiency and thrust. Flow and pressure are incredibly important aspects in rocket engine design. As we learned today, the principles of flow and pressure are quite simple in theory, but in practice they become a whole different kind of animal. Working with high pressure can be extremely challenging and dangerous, which is in part why rocket engines are so tricky. In the next video we're talking about that special nozzle I mentioned. It's called a converging diverging nozzle, and it can transform heat and pressure into motion. This has been Liam from Space is Kinda Cool. Thanks for watching. 